Hey folks, it's Greg. Welcome back. We work on a bunch of small projects in parallel here, and this is one of them. I'm not even going to reveal what it is yet, but it involves a dovetail, and it's supposed to be a nice fit in this dovetail. There's no gib. Uh, unfortunately, as I was doing the math to adjust for the tool diameter to subtract on the DRO settings here, I, I missed a digit and ended up being 10 thou off on each side. So I got 20 thou, in, 20 thou of slop side to side here. Uh, my first take on this was to make a 15 thou shim that I can slip in here, and it does take up the slack pretty well. Um, and that would be good enough, but I figured I'm going to use the opportunity here to do this right, get rid of the shim, and instead put a gib in here, typical dovetail gib, uh, with some gib screws in the side here. So it'll be a nice little uh, practice project here. Now, to make a gib, um, obviously I need to have the gib, it's a, like a trapezoid, it needs to have 30 or 60 degree angles on top and bottom, depending on what surface you're measuring from, to fit into that slot properly. And I don't have a convenient way to hold a piece, a small piece of metal like that in my mill vise at 30 or 60 degrees, and I don't want to tilt the head of the mill vise to do it. That's a big pain. What I really need is an angle plate, something I've been meaning to make for a while. I've never really had a use for it, need for it, until now. So. I've got this um, pallet that I bought from Dayton CNC. I'll leave a link below. It's really a nice uh, pallet. Rather than make my own, I decided to buy this. It's relatively inexpensive. Came with the uh, tow clamps to hold it down and, and dowel pins and so on. Really a nice piece. A three-quarter inch plate of aluminum with accurately CNC holes in there. I'm going to use this and then borrowing an idea from uh, Pragmatic Lee on his channel. I'm going to um, make this sit on top of this big two and a half inch piece of steel here with a with a indent in there, so it'll fit on the in, in the mill vise and be able to tilt back and forth like that. Let me bring it over to the vise and it'll make a little more sense. All right, so here we are over at the mill vise. I got this big piece of two and a half inch. This is actually ten forty five steel. I bought off eBay, it was advertised as 1045 used. What it clearly is, I'm almost certain, is a part chopped out of a hydraulic cylinder, a big massive like bulldozer or a steam shovel hydraulic cylinder. Uh, it seems to have a hardened chrome plating on it, which is really nice. It's very beautiful. Uh, I'm just going to cut a piece of this just wide enough to fit in the jaw here. And then I'm going to cut a notch out of it here, a 90 degree notch out of it here, three quarters of an inch deep to accommodate the uh, fixture plate to sit down in there. Now with a three quarters inch cut out of that, it's just barely going to be above the jaw surface here. So, so that's important. As Pragmatic Lee points out, what you want to do is choose your diameter here. This is three points of contact here. Uh, my jaw height is, is just a tad over one and a half inches. And this is three quarters of an inch. So two and a quarter inches would be just enough, but you want a little extra. So this is two and a half inches tall. All right, so you can get that uh, fixture plate in there and be able to then, you know, loosen this off and turn it in any angle you want. So I think it's a really nice idea from Pragmatic Lee and I'm gonna make one. So now let's get that bar ready for the platen. As with most projects, this uh, starts off on the bandsaw to cut off a hook of steel. I made this just a little wider than my vice jaws and added a smidge more for facing. Saw cuts really fast on turbo mode. And there we go. So now with that cut off two and a half inch piece mounted in here, I want to face it off. Unfortunately with the jaws open that wide, they just barely contact my way cover here. So let me just show you what I do there. I've got a bracket here that serves dual purpose of my DRO cover as well as the way holder. So I lift that up, set that back in temporarily. I find the best way to hold this back is just with a machinist clamp here, clamped against the ways over here. And that keeps the uh, way cover out of the way. So now I can face that off. 
I made this very simple two bearing bump roller a while back and I found it very useful to uh, force parts into alignment on the lathe. So here's a little demo of its use here to get this uh, 1045 trued up. Once the uh, sound levels out it knows you're, uh, it's square. And then I swap in for my uh, facing carbide here and I take a facing pass or two. Pretty tough stuff and I found I had to take very light cuts out of the board stalling my uh, underpowered lathe here. I got that faced off then put a little small chamfer on the end. That yeah, looks pretty good. Then of course I uh, turned that around in the truck and did the same process to the other side. I won't bother showing everything, but again, I bumped it into place and then faced it and chamfered it. And put the part back on the mill, just roughly figuring where that notch is going to be to hold the uh, platen, and also where the bolts are going to be. I figured they need to be three quarters of an inch from the face of the platen, from the edge of the platen. I can't quite get three quarters there, so I'm going to go a little behind the center line on this cut, for better or worse. I tend to use these uh, 3 8 inch end mills because I buy them in sets of five uh, and they're pretty cheap. I'd rather break one of these than one of the expensive half inch ones. There's lots of metal to remove here, so lots of passes. I start off lightly and then get a little more aggressive as I get more confident in the uh, milling process. Making lots and lots of chips, lots to clean up after. Here I'm changing my plan. I changed, I was really going to go three quarters deep and I ended up going to the uh, top of the jaw face. And I'll, uh, Talk more about that later. So I got a very deep notch there. And it's time to attach the two pieces together. I have to um, center find on this part. I'm going to put three holes in here, three mounting bolts for the uh, platen to bar. So here I'm just spot drilling those three holes and I swap off for a pilot drill. And I'm just going to go down deep enough there. I measured the depth there that I don't want to punch through the other side. I'm going as deep as I can without punching through the other side. There I am again with the uh, proper size tap drill. Figuring out how deep I can go and zeroing the quill DRO. And then I can move over. I've got all these DRO positions saved of course. For, so I can repeat their locations and drill down there with a the tap size and then you know what comes next of course which is the tapping. And this is a 10 millimeter tap and it's tough going. It's uh, 1045 steel which is tough and it, because they're blind holes there's no place for the chips to go so I have to keep pulling the tap out and blowing out the chips to uh, make more progress to the bottom of those holes. Do better with a spiral tap and let the chips evacuate out the top but I don't have one in 10 millimeter size. But eventually I got them all tapped and they're all good. And now I'm going to put a light chamfer on that edge just to uh, make it so it's not sharp. Now here's the platen. I got to put the three mounting holes in here. So again, I'm going to center fine on it and edge fine. I'm going to go back three quarters of an inch from that edge with these uh, three bolts. I ended up adjusting just a little beyond three quarters of an inch because that's I wanted to line up on these existing holes. And then I pilot drill uh, each of those holes and then drill them up to 10 millimeters for the bolts. And I'm using 10 millimeter, not 10.5 not clearance holes. I'm using 10s, so they're going to be a tight fit. And then I want the bolt heads to be recessed, you know, flush with the platen top. So here I am uh, using my largest end mill, which is three quarters. But I need a little larger than that for the heads of the uh, bolts. They're actually about 0.38, or sorry, 0.8 inches in diameter. So here I'm using a boring bar, which is a pain in the butt, but I got to be done just a little bit more material to remove so that those bolt heads will fit into those holes. Then I'm taking off just a smidgen here of the edge of the uh, plate just so those bolts will align properly with the um, rod and there I am testing the fit. 
a nice tight fit, everything all together nicely. And finally coming with a chamfer mill again, just to chamfer around the perimeter of this edge. Just the procedure here is I just touch off and I back up, set the depth I want of my chamfer and then uh, use the power feed to go down the edge and then I repeat the basic process around the other three edges. Let's get on the demo here. So here's the jig complete, mounted in the vise. I've got these uh, screws flush with the top, so there's no interference there. This forms a backstop, which I can use to put a piece of material back on there, which is good and bad news. And this is a bit of a flaw here. I was thinking this would be a good idea to lower this down flush with the top of the mill vise here so that I could get a zero degree very easily just by dropping it down there, which is good. Um, but then I might need to have clearance here for a bigger piece sometime, and that might be a problem. I thought I might mill that off flush, but then I'm going to lose a lot more of my angle adjustability there. So if I were to make this again, I, would, I wouldn't go down so far. I'd leave this top flush with the surface of the uh, cylinder here, and that would also let me have some down movement there. The reason I did it again like this is so that I could have a, like a zero degree on here, and then I could just easily plop that down like that and just zero that there. And that would be zero degrees there too, right? So that's a nice thing, but who's ever going to do this thing at a zero degrees anyway? I would, I would take this off and just mount this flush in the vise anyway. So that was just a stupid design. I should really, in perfect hindsight, have raised that up and made it flush, just as pragmatically shows. Um, the other thing I did, uh, you can't really see it from this angle, but I intentionally went slightly beyond the center line of this piece. In fact, I didn't even center find. I just eyeballed the center and then went a little beyond on purpose um, so I could have lots of meat to get these bolts into. I wanted to put the bolts this way on the plate. I mean, I, mean, I didn't make this plate. I purchased it. So just making the best opportunity of where to put these bolts, these uh, machine screws, um, you see these patterns here where every so often and so I went inside one of those patterns while still leaving these dowel pin holes available at the back. Um, I didn't want those, you know, to interfere with them. So I moved, so I moved those things, you know, as little, as little forward this way as I possibly could while still preserving those dowel holes. And I have a fairly large counter bore there that just barely fits my uh, 14 millimeter socket that, um, tightens them up, right? So there's clearance there for the socket to, to tighten them up and remove them. So that's the story there. Again, if I was to make it again, I would do it just as pragmatically shows, which is to go right to the center line exactly and just flush with the top. So just the th thickness of the plate itself. Anyway, this will work fine for my needs. The downside of going beyond center here is that I don't have a full 90 degrees of adjustability in this direction. The most I can possibly go there while still keeping the uh, rear part above the center line is right there, which works out to about 80, well, I can go a little further than that, I had it, had it down here earlier, about 86 degrees I can go safely. Oh, there's 86 and a bit right there. So I've lost four degrees of adjustability in that direction. No big deal to me, I don't think, I hope anyway. I always make this piece again if I really need to, but I don't want to waste more metal. I'm happy with it the way it is. It'll meet my needs. So just to show in use here again, I would zero on my um, zero on my mill vise, then put it on the part I want, and go to um, the angle I want. Let's say I want 30 degrees in this case. And it'll be on 30, and I just tap it into place and tighten it down. Or oh, I hit 30 right on the button. So then I'd uh, tighten it down. And I can bring my mill uh, down there and cut my part, whatever I want. Okay, let's get on with making that uh, gib. I'm going to start by just putting a nice surface finish, not necessarily squaring it, but just putting a nice surface finish on this uh, hunk of eighth inch mild steel here. And actually, I didn't uh, start this way originally. I came out to the garage and uh, spent an hour or more looking for the other mating parallel to this guy. Ended up finding it used to prop up a 
another small part and another vise on every side of the shop. Can't believe I spent so long looking for it. Anyway, that's how you waste time every day. So let me just uh, touch off here. Zero the DRO quill. Zip to the other end here. And start squaring this stuff up. And I cut off a little piece of material for the gib that I need. I coated the other the rest of it with a T9 to uh, preserve it for some future use. Over in the mill, I squared up the edges of the gib and then mounted it on the fixture plate against a couple of dowels. You can't see them very clearly and some finger clamps to hold it in place. Back over in the mill, I adjust that angled plate up to 60 degrees. Took a little few tappy taps here to get it just right. And once it's 60 degrees, I can clamp it in place and then lower the uh, 3 8 inch end mill there to uh, mill off that edge of the trapezoid. Started off very lightly here because I was first time using this fixture plate. Wasn't sure how sturdy it was going to be. It turns out to be very sturdy. Then I removed the fixture plate, flip, flipped the gib around in the platen, and then uh, brought it back to 60 degrees. And this time I took all the rest of that trapezoid off in one pass. And there's what the gib looks like. So I'm going to call that the end of this short video. I've made the adjustable angle plate and used it to uh, cut some sample angles on a sample part, which in this case happened to be a gib that I needed for another project for the sloppy dovetail. I'll finish up actually using this gib in the other project's video. Uh, that project's nearly complete, so it shouldn't be long before I publish it. Uh, its existing dovetail will need to be machined a little narrower to make way for the gib and the adjustment screws on the side and so on. Uh, so with that, I'll say thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come back to uh, watch the completion of the other project where you'll see this gib in use. Bye for now.